Welcome to my updated video on how to set up your Quest 2 for flying with Condor uh, in VR and to be able to pin LK8000 in Kotasa within the cockpit. There are some very significant improvements from my previous video and of course you do need to have auto hotkey and I have set up a repository on GitHub uh, for all my scripts which will make it work. I'm running the latest software on my Quest 2, which is always advisable. And one of the things I did notice is that the refresh rate can now be pinned to 120 kilohertz in the Oculus PC app. And so I've set mine to 120 hertz and a rendering resolution of 1.3. And I find that works exceptionally well. So we'll just quit ourselves out of that. And I've really automated everything uh, as much as I can now, so I don't have to remember to set anything up. So we'll start with my Condor utilities. And I might uh, add that these are all available on my GitHub page, which I will put a link to in this, uh, in this video somewhere. Anyway, I've got my uh, target software running for my Thrustmaster. Uh, Warthog system and the beautiful pendular um, rudder pedals as well. Hideously expensive but absolutely wonderful. And also virtual serial ports which sends the GPS data from Condor through to LK8000. I'll also start up uh, the Kotaco software which will wait until the the flight plan is properly used by Condor 2 and then convert it into an LK8000 um, task. And then once the flight actually starts, there we go, it's waiting for me there. When the flight actually starts, if we go into Condor and free flight, and we may as well pop in a bit of water. Here we go. Often it doesn't seem to quite come up. There we are. And we go into the hangar. We may as well throw some water in. And there we'll do it like it's for the virtual Grand Prix. Here we go. We'll start our flight now. And there we have LK8000 automatically starting up. And Kotas is also automatically loading. So there's very little left for us to do once. Isn't that a nice warning to uh, remind us that everything is working properly. Once the flight starts, all we need to do is to use the Oculus long press button and uh, go back to desktop and then pin LK8000 and Kotasa back into our virtual cockpit. Once there we have full control over LK8000 and the latest version of LK on the um, GitHub site gives us a lovely QWERTY keyboard which I have utilised with my uh, auto hotkey, oops yes, auto hotkey scripts plus my other batch files and things, which is all on my GitHub page, which as I say, I'll link into the uh, into this video. Okay, so here we are. You can see we're all set to fly. We're in southern France, but we've got everything very nicely arranged, but no LK or Kotasa. So let's go in and we might... Uh, just go into landing flat for a moment to stop those horrible beats. No, that doesn't help us. We'll just go out and into our desktop and trigger finger plus middle finger briefly will give uh, be able to extract LK8000. We'll do the same again. We use the little joystick on the controller so. Trigger finger hold, quick tap on the index finger trigger, and then drag to where we want to go. 
with the index finger trigger and then joystick on the controller to get everything in the right position. Sometimes we have to reposition these. Now the most important thing is to pin the experience. There we are, we're pinning it in and now that will show up in our desktop. Here we go, just clicked on the main screen so we can see what's going. We'll get ourselves our feet on the rudder pedals and then we'll click in and here we have everything reasonably neatly attired. I'm just going to put my head down a bit and give a quick, whoops, quick blink on the Oculus button. We can actually change things on the fly. So I'm just going to stare rather pointedly at the... There we are, I got rid of that horrible weight. Stare rather pointedly at LK8000 so you can all see it nicely. So now I'm going to zoom in with using my hottest. You can see down to 10 kilometer range, seven and a half, and keep on going in and out. I can also change the McCready on the fly manually. I go up in steps of five. I can change the bottom menus back to task and then back to cruise, etc. Very nicely and easily. I can do a free flight start and I can also do a task reset and clicking a button gives me my final glide success or failure. A second one gives me airspace distance and then back to the main screen and I also have full control over uh, LK uh, with my mouse. I use it a um, I use a trackball mouse. So we'll just go back there again and we can go in and do any configurations or changes or edits or whatever we like that we like on the fly, literally while we're flying. So we have full mouse control plus the major features of LK8000 are available from the joystick. Looking over to the right, we can see the flaps going up and down. Um, I use the right throttle on my hottest for that. And then air brake, if you can see the air brake coming back there, I use the left throttle on my air brake. So let's see if we can go for a fly. I'll just activate the correct button. Here we go and we should start flying. So here we go. We'll put the flaps up into the position it should be. Looks better. And you can see LK8000 is opening up nicely. Uh, we've got the GPS running. We can zoom in. We can zoom out. And we have full control of everything. Apart from those annoying beats from the flaps when you don't have them set properly. Kotathra is a wonderful thing. As you can see, this is, uh, gives an artificial horizon, wind bearing, and the one on the right gives flaps, uh, netto, all sorts of things that are available there, as well as countdown times. I cannot say too strongly how wonderful Mark uh, tells various utilities that are available. The link to his website is also with this video. Okay, I think we've just about got to the end of that. Isn't it wonderful how we can control LK8000 from within? Oops, and there we have some lift. Away we go. That's why I should get my speed back a lot better than I have. Okay, that's enough playing around. You've seen what the gun is. There we are. We've got our, our thermally indicator in our LK. And when I go straight and leave this lovely thermal, it will eventually go back to its normal setting. So if I can help you in any way with this setup, all the scripts are in my GitHub page linked in the video. And uh, 
it does work remarkably well after a bit of setup. Of course, you'll need uh, auto hotkey, 